All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Shadi Ibrahim. I'm an Indian researcher working within the Emirates team in Rennes, France. And today, I will be talking about our work on revisiting erasure codes in data intensive clusters. This is a joint work with Jada Roos, a former PhD student, and Christian Pires. As we know, replication has been successfully employed and practiced in data intensive clusters. It is essential to ensure high data availability and avoid data loss in case of failures. It's also important to guarantee fast access by directing users to the closest replicas, especially in geo-distributed environments. And it can help to provide high performance, for example, by implementing data locality, scheduling tasks on the nodes where data resides. However, with the continuous increase of data sizes, replication becomes expensive in terms of storage costs. According to the last report from IDC, the size of generated and replicated data will reach 181 zettabytes in 2025, while the estimated storage capacity is 16 zettabytes. On the other hand, replication is becoming costly in terms of network. For example, traces from production data centers in Facebook and Microsoft show that half of the network traffic is attributed to replication traffic. Moreover, with the wide deployment of high-end devices like SSDs and NVRAMs, replication becomes also expensive in terms of hardware costs. On the other hand, erasure coding, EC, manifests as an alternative to replication, as it can provide the same fault tolerance guarantee, but with lower storage overhead. Here, I will show how EC works while focusing on Reed Solomon codes one of the most widely used EC families and the focus of our work. The block is divided into data chunks and these data chunks are encoded to generate parity chunks. The number of data and parity chunks is configurable and it represents a trade-off between storage overhead and availability degree. The chunks are then distributed to different machines and any four out of the six chunks can be used to reconstruct the original data block. And by that, we can see how EC can tolerate two failures, like three-way replication, with just 50% storage overhead. Encoding and decoding operations are considered CPU-intensive operations. Therefore, traditionally, EC has been mainly adopted in environments where high data access latency can be tolerated like P2P and archiving systems. However, with the release of storage acceleration libraries like Intel ISAL that allows EC operations to run at CPU speed, we started to see EC deployed on the critical path of data access. For example, a recent work showed that EC can outperform replication in caching systems. In addition, EC has been integrated into the latest major release of HDFS, the storage backend for data analytic frameworks. The performance of EC strongly depends on the data layout. EC can be implemented under contiguous layout, where N blocks are encoded together to generate the parity blocks. Contiguous data layout allows local read, as a data block can be read completely from a single node. And this is why it has been mostly used in previous works targeting data analytics. However, it brings high memory overhead, as all the blocks should be available in memory for encoding and decoding. Under Stripe data layout, each block is encoded separately, as I have explained in the previous example. Stripe, Stripe data layout offers many advantages over the contiguous one. First, it's more efficient for small files. And nowadays, small files are predominant in storage systems. Second, it requires less memory overhead for encoding and decoding. And finally, it allows parallel access to the data. It's important to note that both EC cache and HDFS use EC with Stripe data layout. So given its potential, previous efforts target understanding the performance of data-intensive applications and their EC with contiguous data layout, and therefore 
focus on improving data locality and evaluating EC for intermediate data. In this work, we are trying to complete the picture by specifically targeting understanding the performance of concurrent write and read operations when the clients reside outside Hadoop cluster and study the impact of AC with Stripe data layout on the performance of data intensive applications and under different system configurations. First, let's look at the performance of concurrent read and writes when their clients reside outside the cluster. We perform our experiments on the top of the grid 5000 testbed. We use 21 machines from the Econom cluster at the site of Node. Each machine is equipped with eight cores, 64 gigabyte of main memory and one HDD, and are connected by a 10 gigabit Ethernet network. We deployed the last major version of HDFS, and we set the block size to 256 megabytes. The replication factor was set to three, and for AC, we used the default configuration of Reed Solomon with six original chunks and three parity chunks. We deployed a set of clients on a different cluster, one client per machine, and we run micro benchmarks with concurrent read and writes, and we used the average throughput per client as a performance metric. So in adding data, on the left, we can see that the throughput of a single client is higher under replication than under AC. This is expected, as 50% more data are transferred under EC from the client to the cluster. Under EC, the client performs the encoding and sends the original data chunks alongside the parity chunks, while under replication, the client sends the, just the original block, which is then pipelined inside the cluster. It's important to note that the write is considered successful when the data is replicated in the main memory of the nodes without necessarily being persisted to disks. When running concurrent clients, we can notice that EC can largely outperform replication, especially with increasing file sizes. Here, despite that more data are sent from the clients to the cluster and the EC, and the replication, more data are persisted on disks as the main memories of the data nodes become full. In this case, we can see how the bottleneck is shifted from the network to disk and how employing AC is important to reduce disk I.O. Uh, when reading data, as expected, with a singular client, AC clearly outperforms replication as data is read from multiple disks in parallel, six in our setup, while each block is read sequentially from one node and the replication. When increasing the number of clients to five, the performance under EC drops, and therefore the performance gap between EC and replication decreases. This is mainly due to the imbalance in data loads among different nodes. To show the imbalance in data load, we looked at the disk throughputs, and as we can see, some of the nodes serve more clients a time, which in turn results in exploiting the full capacity of the disks with a throughput of 125 megabyte per second, while the majority of the nodes were serving one client most of the time, thus exhibit low utilization of disks. And this is why disk throughputs are above 100 megabyte per second during 18% of the read workload time under EC, while the disk throughputs are above 100 megabyte during 50% of the read workload time under replication. Now we are ready to move to the MapReduce experiments. We used the same setup as for HDFS. We deployed Yarn as a resource manager and we configure it to run eight containers per node. These containers are used to run the map and reduce tasks. We used three representative benchmarks to evaluate the performance of data intensive jobs. However, in this talk, I will focus on the sort application. Sort is a shuffle intensive application that has an output size equals to the input size. We run our experiment under different scenarios, for example, with overlapping shuffle and then overlapping shuffle like Spark. Also, we study the impact of hardware by deploying HDFS in memory and emulating slow networks. Finally, we used the job execution time as a performance metric. To facilitate the understanding of our results, I will describe briefly how jobs are executed in Hadoop. First, the input data is read by the map tasks, 
Each task applies them a function on one HDFS block and emits a list of key value tuples. A shuffle takes place to aggregate all key values having the same key and transfer them to the corresponding reducer. Reduce tasks apply the reduce function on these key values and then write the final results back to HDFS. Here we can see that the main difference between EC and replication is when reading and writing the data. I will start by presenting the job execution time of sort application with non-overlapping shuffle, which is similar configuration as a Spark. We can see that replication has better performance than EC when increasing data, data set sizes. To understand the difference, we look in more details on the execution of the application. Here are the timelines of map and reduce tasks when sorting 40 gigabyte of data. First, as expected, and similar to the case of concurrent writes, the reduce phase takes longer time under replication, and this is expected as more data have to be written to disks. Looking at the math phase, we found that the math phase finishes faster under replication in 43 seconds, while it takes 70 seconds under EC. We have two observations here. First, we observe that some tasks under EC are faster than all tasks under replication, which confirms that data locality is not the issue. Second, as we can see, there are several tasks that are running two times slower than the average. We refer to these tasks as strugglers, and these tasks are the reason behind the prolonged time of the math phase under EC. As for the amount of data contributed by each data node during the math phase, we can see high skew in the amount of data read by each node under EC. Some nodes contribute 400 megabytes of data, while other nodes contribute 3.5 gigabytes. While under replication, most of the nodes contribute 2 gigabytes of data on average. And this is what's expected as we are running 8 tasks per node, and each task read one HDFS block of 256 megabyte. These nodes, which are heavily loaded, impact negatively the tasks which are running within them and the tasks that are reading data from them. For example, the average runtime of map tasks running on the most loaded node is 59 seconds, while it's 25 seconds on the least loaded node. Interestingly enough, the physical block distribution under both EC and replication is balanced in HDFS. And we found out that the main reason for the high variation in the data reads among different data nodes under EC is that original and parity chunks are treated the same when distributed across Hadoop cluster. In the previous experiments, we have identified that data distribution has a direct impact on the job performance and results in strugglers and their erasure coding. And as a first step to mitigate read imbalance between data nodes, we have introduced a new chunk placement that evenly distributes the data and the parity chunks across data nodes. We have implemented this in HDFS, and here are the experimental results. First, as we can see, the job execution time is slightly improved when using EC aware. This is due to the well-balanced load between data nodes. But when looking at the timelines of map and reduced tasks, we can still observe variation in map task runtimes under EC aware. We think this is due to the order of reading data under EC and the imbalance of the number of requests at a time across data nodes. Now let's see the results when injecting failures. Under EC, when a failure happens, six out of the remaining eight original and parity chunks will be read and decoded. We refer to that as degraded read. As we can see, degraded reads introduce negligible overhead and therefore the performance under EC is comparable to the one under replication. When using memory, for HDFS, we can see that math phases are the same under both EC and replication. While the reduce phase is longer under EC, and this is because the overhead of encoding. And to conclude, erasure codes do have the potential to replace replication in data intensive clusters. They provide the same data availability guarantees and achieve comparable performance.
However, there is still room for improvements by, for example, mitigating the unbalanced distribution of data reads across data nodes, reduce the impact of encoding and decoding when storing data in SSDs and memory, and finally, investigating uh, the energy efficiency under EC. Thank you, and I will be very happy to answer your questions. So I believe we should be able to get to the Zoom questions here. Hello, everyone. All right, do we have any questions from the room? Yes. Hi, yeah, sorry, I just had a question on your choice of uh, six chunks and three uh, parity chunks. Uh, did you try any other chunkings and parity chunks or just, yeah, or, I mean, yeah thanks. Uh, actually, we tried different uh, like stripe size, like with different parity and uh, original chunks. So we went with uh, 6, 3, uh, 10, 4 as it's used actually in Microsoft. And again, I mean, increasing the number of uh, like um, parity chunks and the uh, size of the stripe, it can lead to more reduction in the storage on the one hand, but on the other hand, we will have more requests at, uh, at the disk. And this is actually will cause some kind of more interference. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'll ask a question. One of the, the issues that you saw was interference effects from the chunks being placed essentially on the same devices being accessed at the same time. Do you have a sense of a good approach for trying to distribute them in a way that has less interference? Actually, we are trying to, uh, let's say, to order the tasks that we can balance the requests at a time uh, among different, uh, different disks. Uh, so the thing like we are trying now to use some deep learning techniques uh, that it can give us some feedback, uh, I mean, from the disk to the scheduler uh, to make better order uh, of the tasks. So this is actually ongoing work we are working on now. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, then let's thank our speaker again.